Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. Recently, I bought a MacBook off of eBay for $29, plus postage. The only problem is it was described as not working and for parts. But before we open up the package, I'd like to tell you that today's sponsor is Squarespace, an all-in-one platform for creating great looking websites and online stores. Anyway, let's open up the package. Using my trusty knife, I cut the box open. It's always a bit nerve-wracking seeing if the laptop survived shipping. This one came surrounded by packing paper without any bubble wrap. This protective sleeve is what the MacBook would have originally shipped in back in 2009. Opening it up for the first time is quite promising. The screen hinge also feels excellent. With the MacBook unwrapped, we can see it's in very good condition. And the rubber base is actually nearly perfect. I've actually got a bit of a feeling that it was probably replaced under the replacement program that Apple offered up until about three or four years after the purchase date, where they would, I believe, send you out a new replacement bottom free of charge. Well, let's see exactly what we're dealing with internally. Eight small Phillips head screws hold the back plate on. Applying some pressure release the clips holding it on. Now we've got a good look at the internals. The eBay listing definitely said the faulty RAM was removed. Yet, here we have 4GB of DDR3 memory. This is upgraded from the stock 2GB. Plugging in a compatible MagSafe power adapter indicates that it is indeed charging the battery. So, I thought I'd simply try turning it on. The fan spun up, it played the boot chime and displayed video. It seems as if the laptop actually works. So, let's throw in a cheap SATA SSD and see what happens. Whoever removed the hard disk was kind enough to leave the screws and drive bracket taped inside. The Kingston A400 can be picked up for around 30 Australian dollars, basically what this whole laptop cost. Adding a similar cheap solid state drive is a great, cost effective way to make your laptop feel a lot more responsive. I fired the Mac back up and booted into a macOS Lion install USB. With the SSD formatted, I began the installation. I'll end up installing 10.12 Sierra. It's just my install USB didn't work for some reason. About 20 minutes later, the install was complete. While the battery seemed to hold a charge, it apparently needed replacing and had very poor health. Contrary to the eBay description, this seems to be a fully functioning unibody MacBook. It definitely needs a good cleaning as it is a little bit grotty. But first, let's redo the thermal paste which has surely gone hard over the last 10 years. Okay, so now that we've got the back of the system off, first of all, we're going to disconnect the battery. While it would be good to replace this battery, that's gonna cost probably another 40 to $50. And considering the whole machine was only $29 to begin with, I think we can live with mediocre battery life. And I'm also quite surprised that the RAM in this machine actually works. I'm not exactly sure what the listing meant by faulty RAM. But as far as I can tell, the two sticks of DDR3 in here actually seem to work fine. And considering they total 4 gigabytes, I don't really see the need to upgrade them further. Although you can actually put up to 8 gigabytes in this machine. To begin removing the logic board, a structural metal piece was first to come out. Next is the cooling fan held in place by three small Phillips head screws. One of them didn't want to unscrew. So yeah, I actually managed to strip one of the fan screws. Uh, the other two came out without any issues, but this one just wouldn't budge. But that's nothing a bit of careful drilling can't fix. Using an electric drill, I began to slowly whittle down the screw. After some time, a lot of fine metal shavings started to accumulate. You definitely don't want these things staying inside the computer. With a bit more drilling, the head of the screw was finally off. With all the connectors disconnected, I removed all of the Torx T6 screws holding the board in place. The logic board is quite dusty, but thankfully shows no signs of liquid damage or corrosion. Before we see just how bad that thermal paste is, I'd like to tell you just how good your website could look if you use today's sponsor. If you've ever wanted to create your own website but don't have experience with design or coding, why not try today's sponsor Squarespace? I've only ever made terrible websites back in high school and I was amazed how easy it was to create a professional looking site. 
If you've ever wanted to get your foot in the door with e-commerce, Squarespace also offers you templates, secure payments, and merchandising features for the products you'd like to sell online. Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and if you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com forward slash pcivrai to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. The cooling plate seems somewhat cemented to the logic board. That is really some dried out thermal paste. I started removing it using some 100% isopropyl alcohol, which will leave the surface very clean and oil free. The heatsink has also had its fair share of thermal paste, or should I say thermal powder as it's really that dry. To remove the excess paste and dust built up, I brushed off the logic board. I gave the processor dyes one last wipe before I applied the new thermal paste. I chose to use Arctic MX4. When the cooler is placed back on, the paste will spread thinly over the surface. Before I put the board back in, I dusted out the fan, as well as the case. I could disassemble it further, but it's clean enough inside as it is. This is definitely one of the cleanest unibody MacBooks I've come across. Sliding the board back in is usually a bit tricky due to all the small connectors on the edges. With the fan, RAM and all connectors plugged back in, I wiped off any smudged surfaces with some methylated spirits. Last of all, I put the rubber base back in place. The big question is, does it still turn on? Thankfully, that answer is a resounding yes. Now that we've got it all back together, it's time to give it a good cleaning, starting off with a bit of eucalyptus oil. Laptop trackpads and keyboards can be quite dirty, even if they don't look like it. So be sure to get in between the keycaps. I used a Q-tip doused in metho to do just that. To clean the display surface, I started with a paper towel dampened with water. I followed that up with some lens cleaning solution on a microfiber cloth. It ended up looking nearly spotless aside from some marks left by contact with the keyboard. The marks on the lid came off effortlessly with a dab of eucalyptus oil. The base also cleaned up really well. This is now one very clean machine once again. Since this MacBook's made of plastic, it's not really going to dent. However, this model is prone to scratches and cracks near the hinges, but luckily mine has no cracks on the body whatsoever. Now that I've got this running Mac OS 10.12 and I've installed some programs, let's see just what it's capable of. The high resolution monitor, which was- Full HD YouTube playback was excellent. With the Mac running Sierra, it thinks the battery health is now normal, which is very good. During my initial testing, I noticed the Mac was getting very hot. I'd highly suggest installing a fan control application. Even when playing games, the fan stayed at its idle speed of 2000 RPM even with the CPU reaching 90 degrees Celsius. I decided to manually increase the fan speed, which very quickly dropped the temperature by 24 degrees. So, how well does it actually run old school RuneScape? Pretty well is the answer, and it's definitely playable. Minecraft with the render distance set to 8 yielded frame rates around 50 FPS. Not perfect, but very much playable. Terraria was another game that ran absolutely fine. The Unigen Heaven benchmark got about 8 to 10 frames per second on low quality settings. It really did struggle. Last of all, I wanted to see just how hot the system would run itself before it ramped up the fan speed. It reached a water boiling 101 degrees Celsius before it increased the fan speed. Back in 2009 when this model came out, I was absolutely obsessed with the idea of saving up for one. I actually even drew this picture and put it on my wall. But what's it like using one of these nearly 11 years later? Well, one of the highlights is definitely the keyboard. The chiclet keys are a joy to type on. Apple really nailed multi-touch gestures and their trackpad on this device. The port selection was a little bit stripped back compared to its rival 13-inch MacBook Pro back in 2009, but that extra heft made for a durable and reliable device. I wouldn't really call it Apple's budget laptop as it cost 1299 Australian dollars but it sure was a compelling device back when it came out. So there we have it, a unibody MacBook restored to its former glory. 
Honestly, these have held up pretty well, this laptop nearly being 11 years old. It's still pretty usable for basic tasks, only being let down by its aging battery and probably its fairly weak processor. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. And if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.